The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the March 5th, wonderful Wednesday edition of today's opening bell on The Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I absolutely treasure your presence here today. My outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better money master and to provide you with the tools, well, just simply the tools that each of us need in order to lead an inspired life. Because leading an inspired life, folks, that's what it's all about. So let's go look at one of our tools. This is the tool I call, if nothing is ventured, nothing is gained. You know, the spirit of adventure is a deeply human trait. It's one that is within each of us and has been since the beginning of mankind. It's the potential we have within us, and it ends up leading to an innate need for each of us to leave the world a better place than we found it. Not that we have to. In fact, few are likely to notice if we do nothing with our life. You know folks like this. You know folks like this, folks that play it safe, folks who venture nothing. But nothing ventured is nothing gained. Now here's the cool thing. We choose to leave what seems safe and familiar to us and instead voyage into uncharted waters. We become like the first person who set out to conquer fire, a real adventurer who dared to go forward into the unknown, a real pioneer. When we venture out of the safe zone, we become one who can make a difference. Think of it like this. You can't cross the sea merely by standing and staring at the water. You know, if you've ever received an email from me, you've seen my digital signature. It says, be a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past. Yes, folks, if nothing is ventured, nothing is gained. Let's go check out the gains in the marketplace here. Huh. No gains? What do you mean? The Dow futures are trading off three points. They're trading at 16,377. Uh, S&P futures are flat right now. They're trading out at 1871. NASDAQ futures, there we go. We can find a gain. It's uh, trading up two bucks. It's trading at 3719. Gold is uh, flat. It's trading at 1337. Silver's up three pennies, trading at 2126. Light sweet crude back 28 cents right now. It's trading out at 103. And just a little bit of change here. Natural gas back four cents, trading at 462. Hope everybody out there had a great Tuesday, great Tuesday evening, explosive market yesterday. Let's take a quick peek around the globe, see what we have going on out here right now over in Germany. The DAX is trading down 29 points, about three-tenths of a percent. Not a big deal after being up nearly 3% yesterday. The FTSE down 40 points, uh, maybe a bigger deal there. It's off six-tenths of a percent. Mixed bag in Asia last night. Nikkei was up a little over 1%, 176 points. Hang Seng off three-quarters of a percent. No, not three quarters, one third. My apologies. Point uh, three uh, percent out there, off seventy-seven points, and the uh, Shanghai was down uh, nineteen points. That was down nearly a full percentage point. Our call in number eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you give me a call, folks, love to hear from you. Take your question, answer your question, do whatever I can to assist you in whatever trade it is you might be looking in. Look at looking in. How about that? Looking at here. Now, let's go, uh, let's switch over into the short-term charts. Let's see if we can find anything that's going on short-term-wise. We're going to change over to the Rhodes Momentum Indicator charts out here so that I can pull it up on the screen. We'll take a look at the 30-minute uh, chart. Now, the Russell yesterday, Russell 2000, you know, just uh, explosive move, both candlestick-wise, both volume-wise, the whole kit and caboodle. What's interesting to note here on the 30-minute chart is it did form one of Stevie's price relative strength divergent uh, patterns, and it uh, formed that at about uh, one thirty in the afternoon yesterday. Now, this is the futures contract that we're taking a look at. That's when it was making its high, made its high out here at uh, one thirty. The futures, whoops, i got to do something. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to do that. Made the high in the futures uh, out of the price level of 12, 12, uh, 50. Now, I've got a 10-minute delay on this, so right now it shows it's trading out at about the 12.04-ish uh, level out here. Now, made that divergent pattern. That that alone right there, you didn't see any kind of reversal candle, no reversal signal. That was not the reversal signal at all, but we did get this little bear sash here coming into the close at 4 p.m. That was the uh, reversal signal that's out there. Now, we've seen the market just simply you know, it was in the extreme overbought condition. And what we have seen, and this is more bullish than bearish, 
We have seen the Russell 2000 just simply move sideways. I mean, totally move sideways in order to be able to work off that overbought condition out here. So if uh, we see the uh, Russell 2000 take out this resistance level, which is the high again, 12, 12, 50, what it will really tell us, well, I don't know what it will tell us. It will tell us certainly on the short-term move out here on a 30-minute chart, which has a pretty good uh, track record, a good uh, expectancy, positive expectancy of being able to pick uh, short-term tops and bottoms. Now, in this case here, picking a short-term top, this would say the relative strength indicator would move down into the uh, 30 range. It's at uh, 48 Point one nine. That's when that's when the uh, that's when the pattern completes itself. That doesn't mean that I can't move further down. But you want to use other tools at that stage to uh, take a look at the trade. So that's in the most powerful uh, move that we saw yesterday, both from a volume standpoint, from a percentage standpoint, from a candle standpoint. We'll take a look at that all together. But that's what the Russell 2000 30 minute chart is showing. Let's go see if it's got friends and family out there. We'll see if it's got friends and family by taking a look at the S&P futures contract, 30-minute chart as well, see what it formed. Hey, how about that? At the same time, it was also forming one of these price relative strength divergent patterns. Now, this one came in at 2.30 in the afternoon. It took a little bit longer for the ES Mini to uh, form its pattern. It was up at a high of 1874.75. We really didn't get any kind of reversal signal till right here, and that was at about 12.30 uh, this morning. Uh, small bodied candles, boy, it's hard to put a lot of weight into uh, that uh, session. Now, what we did see here is at 8.30, so just before we're really getting ready to come on the air here this morning, we did see a bearish engulfing candle form up here. The highs have not been taken out. The highs, again, being the uh, session here. Let's see, was, was it 18.74.75, 18.74? Yeah, 18.74.75, that is the number, of course. It, too, has been moving sideways. It, too, meaning the S&P futures contract. Uh, you know, after we went into the close, working off an extremely overbought uh, condition out there. So more bullish than bearish, but it does have the markings of, uh, with a conf confirmation here, of a uh, reversal. Says you could see a, uh, a slight pullback maybe during the first, uh, I don't know, what whatever, the first, uh, we could see a slight pullback out here in the market. At least we've got the Russell 2000, strong dog, showing us that. Uh, the uh, ES Mini as well. Now look, when these if these highs get taken out, they also tell you that, uh, a normal reversal pattern has failed. It tells you you've got strong moves that are going on inside of the marketplace. If we take a look at the uh, NQ, let's go check out the other uh, cousin out here, NASDAQ futures. Of course, we can't leave out the uh, Dow, so we'll go see if the Dow had that pattern as well. The NQ formed its uh, pattern out here at about 1230 yesterday afternoon. Actually formed, looks like it uh, made just a slightly higher high. It most certainly did. How about that? Made a slightly higher high as we were coming on the, uh, well, not coming on the air just yet, but at 8 o'clock this morning. See, the high out here at 1230, let's go see what that was. That was 37.23 and a quarter. And here during the 8 o'clock session, again, the 30-minute session, we got up to 37.45.25 out there. Still doing that on less relative uh, strength out here. Um, so even the uh, NASDAQ uh, futures are suggesting the potential for a uh, pullback. I say potential because you know what 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 occurred here was making that uh, making a higher price and less relative strength and then just simply moving sideways when you move sideways and you're consolidating up at the uh, top out here um again it has more it's more bullish than it is uh, bearish out there uh, if it had pulled back uh, further that'd be maybe a little bit different story out here but it has not done that now if we take a look at the uh, Dow let's go round this out let's take a look at the uh, Dow futures out here uh, take a look at the March contract Let's see if this has also created a pattern. Well, in the case of the Dow, which is the weaker of the links out here, it did form this pattern. This was at 2.30 yesterday afternoon. As it got up to a price high of, uh, what was it, 16.409 out there, a little bearish engulfing candle that followed up. We've seen a couple of bearish engulfing candles. Again, but not having a lot of oomph, not a lot of uh, uh, energy there to move the market slower because they, too, have been consolidating sideways. But we do have these small little we do have these small little patterns out here that suggest a, a potential of a, a little short term uh, top inside of the marketplace that's taking a look at the 30 minute contracts out here we don't have the same pattern really for the 120 minute uh, time frames uh, if we did that would uh, that would to me spell a little bit more potential trouble out here oh come on don't take uh, don't take too much time here i was just going to try to switch over to the 120 minute chart here real quickly quickly how about that quickly out here let me see we've got that enough days in here 
I could have just pulled up a different chart. So as we take a look at the 120-minute charts out here, we're really not seeing any kind of bearish pattern in the Dow, which is the weaker of the uh, indices out here. So that is, in a, you know, and really you want to use the longer-term time frame as your trend, right? So the Dow does not show that. If I take a quick look, I am sure the Russell 2000 is not going to uh, show that because of the uh, strong move out here. So now the Russell 2000 as well does not uh, show any kind of pattern. Let's take a quick peek here, take a look at the NASDAQ before we go into our uh, first breakout here. Take a look at the 120-minute chart for the NASDAQ uh, futures. The only thing that we see out here, nah, you know, got a bearish engulfing candle. This thing took place at 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon, but, you know, immediately was not followed up on that next candle. So always makes that high, which uh, it, it does have resistance. Uh, it has got resistance up here that it needs to clear. So inside the uh, NASDAQ, if the NASDAQ uh, gets over 37.2250, on a 120-minute chart out there, uh, it'll move to higher ground. 877, we'll speak about higher ground. we get right back. 877-927-6648. Be right back, folks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. If you're new to TFNN, then you've probably heard some of our hosts and traders talk about the exciting charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. Tuesday, March 11th at 6.30 p.m., Dave White and Tom O'Brien will be hosting a live study session for anyone with a subscription to this exciting charting program. During this hour-long online workshop, Dave and Tom will lead a brief presentation along with taking questions from those that attend. Right now, we have a great deal for all new subscribers. You can sign up for the art of timing the trade charts and get your first entire month for only $1 while gaining access to this live event with Tom O'Brien and Dave White. For more information on how this exciting charting program works, you can click on the Charts button on the front page of TFNN.com today and check out some of the videos that walk you through a variety of the features included. Sign up now by taking advantage of this exciting offer for just $1 before it's too late. Visit TFNN.com today. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rose, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so I mentioned before we went into break, higher ground out here now of interesting uh, note that uh, I don't know if um, I think most people just kind of missed the, uh, missed the whole matter altogether. I've got the uh, NASDAQ composite chart on my uh, screen here. Now, this is the uh, monthly chart. And if we take a look at the monthly chart, made the uh, monthly swing point high March of 2000. Now, the actual low of that session, 43.55.69. Guess we did yesterday. We got up into that. We got up, uh, not we, but the uh, NASDAQ composite got up to a high of 43.57.21 out there. So uh, it has made its way, it has clawed its way all the way back to March of 2000. How about that, folks? Now, in doing so, a number of different uh, factors are either completing, about to complete, uh, number one, <clears throat> what we, uh, we can take a look at, 43.66, 44 would be the exact number out here. Uh, we got to 435721 at 436644 if you were going to be exact about it that completes a 1 to 1.272 a to b equals cd to the upside and it's also completed a 0.786 retracement it's actually just above the uh, 0.786 retracement at 4271 out there uh, you've got a primary trading range of boundary line up at the uh, 4300 uh, level uh, just right above 4366, I'd have to say right around the 44, 4400 level altogether. That completes a 13-year uh, a measured move of the consolidation of breakout. You know, I say 13-year. The uh, NASDAQ composite was consolidating since um, January of 2001, all the way up until it uh, broke out of that consolidation. It did it really with uh, conviction, broke that consolidation, with the uh, candle session November of 2012. November 30th, 2012 was the uh, last test of that consolidation, and the market just simply uh, took off from there. Now, no bearish reversal signals or anything like that. In fact, it hasn't had a, a bearish reversal signal since October of 2012 as we take a look at a, a monthly chart out here. So it's uh, now we're just into uh, March. But, of course, you know the routine. The routine is this. If you close inside this month here, the month of March, you close inside, meaning above 43.55, uh, 69 out there, that says that you can go run up to the top of that swing point, and that would be the uh, March 31st high, 51.32.52. Uh, now, when you break these consolidation levels, remember your minimum objective is the uh, measured move. It is equal to the consolidation pattern. And uh, uh, in in essence, we're very close to completing uh, that objective here. But they uh, very the, the the move off of March of 2009, uh, where the high was put in, the uh, short term high was put in here in April May of 2011. You know, it looks like probably 0.382 retracement. Let's just go measure that 0.382 or yeah, not even a 0.382 retracement. That tells you a lot of energy wound up here. The price along the uh, C to D leg is also just as impressive as that A to B leg, and this has been an expansion. Normally, you know, you get to the expansion, you start kind of waning to the right-hand side of that C to D angle, and quite frankly, it has not done that. In fact, very explosive in the uh, month of February out there. So just pointing out that uh, the NASDAQ composite has made its way back to the highs. That's with the monthly chart. Now, the weekly chart here is not showing us uh, getting back to those highs here just yet. Let's take a look where that weekly swing point uh, comes in at. We'll draw a line across the uh, screen out here. So that weekly swing point high, that took place the uh, week of March 10th. And if we take a look at what the uh, bottom of that is, let me just draw the uh, line across here. So we're now going to be paying attention to this week because a close above 47.22, 47.22.14 is the uh, number. Let me pull this back here. So 47, keep pulling it back, keep pulling it back. 47.22 
Uh, that is, uh, that, that's about, I don't know if think we'll see that this, well, I don't know what we'll see this week here. Anything is possible. That is a long way up here at 43.51, though. But it, should we ever see a close inside that, that just simply helps to ensure a uh, move up to the uh, top out there. So that's in the NASDAQ composite. Uh, that's what I thought I would uh, share with you. Let's go take a look at uh, currency markets. Let's see what we've got going on in the uh, currency world. Let's start off with the uh, queen. Take a look at the uh, euro u.s dollar again there's the weekly chart for the euro u.s dollar boy how strong is a resistance area here both horizontal both diagonal resistance trend line resistance that's a black diagonal line if you're watching us on tiger tv a horizontal resistance being that big old bearish engulfing candle that took place on november the first out here uh, that high of resistance horizontally is 1.3831 out here uh, not a whole lot further. I would not be playing the euro to the uh, short side, or if you're going to do it, make sure you're doing it on those ultra short term uh, chart patterns out there 10 minute, 15 minute, something like that, because uh, support is just really around the uh, corner. Now, what's interesting here is, you know, is the euro really getting ready to break a, a trend that has been in place since 2008 out here? But well, we're going to find out. 877-927-6648. Be right back, folks. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technamental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. 
No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. to the races we got the dow trading up 26 points down at 16 369 s&p off three at 1871 composite down one full point trading out at 4350 russell 2000 off two and a half points trading out at 1206 apple up 85 cents microsoft down a quarter google flat uh, cisco up six pennies lead the charge to the upside here arrow arrow environment inc a v a v is the uh, ticker symbol I see they're out with uh, numbers. Revenues of $69 million versus 47 Nice uh, growth there. Net income for their third quarter, $11 million versus $3.8. They're being handsomely rewarded this morning, up 14%, $4 and a change. Arrowhead uh, Resh, what is this? Arrowhead uh, R-E-S-H uh, Corp. A-R-W-R. -R. They're up a nice uh, 18% this morning, up uh, $3.97. I do not see... The uh, news or any kind of earnings release behind that. Uh, Kihu 360 Technologies up uh, four percent, up four bucks and change. So fun holdings having a lot of fun this morning. I remember when they didn't have fun. S F U N. I think they were down with some big volume not too long ago. Up about four percent here this morning. Fiery. Fire Eye, F E Y E, up three and a half uh, bucks, uh, about uh, nearly four percent. Amazon up uh, three dollars, about a. Three quarters of a percent here. Smith and Wesson, the gun, the manufacturer, they're up fourteen percent. Did they uh, produce numbers out here? I think they did. Uh, Smith and Wesson. Let me see if I can find their uh, numbers out here. Looks like their fourth quarter sales. Uh, I don't want approximately somewhere between one hundred and sixty, around one hundred and sixty million or so. Their net income looks like net income up uh, quite a bit, twenty million versus fourteen. So a good job there. And uh, Smith and Wesson trading up about sixteen percent, up a buck eighty-seven. To the downside out here this morning, HCI Group is the uh, ticker symbol. They are getting just hammered, uh, down about uh, eight uh, bucks, down fifteen percent here. Looks like they're out with numbers as well. Let's see if I can find them here. Uh, not not going to be so easy. Uh, we'll go take a look at the uh, stock chart. Fleet Core Technologies (FLT). I think we were looking at that for someone the other day. That's off uh, four bucks this morning, down uh, three percent. Why? Why Inc. off three bucks, uh, about three percent. Oh man, X O M A is the uh, ticker symbol, down twenty-two percent. Zoma Corp. Zoma Corp. See what these guys uh, do. They uh, they discover and develop antibody-based therapeutics in the U.S., Europe, and Asia. Uh, and they are just getting nailed here this morning. They had a fourth quarter loss of, it looks like, 55 cents a share versus a profit of three pennies from the uh, prior year. They did 12 million, so they're growing the top line, 12 million versus 7.3. But boy, they've got some, they've got some, uh, they've got some expenses. It looks like trading. No, I don't think trading is halted on this. Oh, maybe it is. Looks like trading's been halted. Maybe there's more bad news. To uh, come, we'll take a look at the uh, stock chart. I can't tell if a trading's halted or not. In any event, you've got Oak Tree Capital down three percent. Canadian Solar CSIQ is the uh, ticker symbol. They're down uh, about two bucks, down five percent here this morning. Now, not on my normal page out here, but David White gave me the heads up. Hovanian Enterprises H O V is the uh, ticker symbol. They released numbers this morning. Uh, generated revenues of three hundred sixty-four million versus three fifty-eight from the uh, prior year. Uh, that's actually that's from the uh, from the first quarter here. In their first quarter, they had a, a net loss of twenty four million versus a net loss of eleven million uh, during the uh, prior quarter. So let's take a look at Tov Nanin. H O V is a ticker symbol. It's trading right now at five seventy. Uh, it's going to attack this uh, swing point out here 
from uh, January 27th. The uh, 5.6 million shares, low of that is $5.54 uh, so far today, and it's gap down. Uh, so far today, you're down with a million shares. So uh, it's going to take that on. If it takes that on and it uh, gets below the uh, low out there, 554, assume that volume is going to be enough to take that out. You'd have it confirmed. A to B equals CD to the downside in Hovnani. Now, the A point here, $6.80 January 3rd was the high. The B point out here has been January 27th. January 27th low, that 554. Your C point being the retracement into February 28th. Now, what is interesting here uh, is that uh, you can see how, at least in the case of Hovnani, let's go take a look at the actual, we'll take a look at some of the other uh, entities inside the real estate market because it made a high January 3rd. You had the uh, markets, for the most part, making their highs around uh, December 31st out there. So uh, following suit with the uh, markets. Now, in the case of Hovnanian, much weaker on the uh, rebound here, on the uh, bounce. Uh, now, the bounce obviously taking place February 5th inside of the uh, market. Uh, but uh, February, you know, this this actually formed below here on January 27th. At least that's the swing point that we're using if it busts through that, it says 493. Now, the interesting thing about 493, and that's what, that's what, quite frankly, you'd like to actually see out here. Of course, you'd like to see it do it on lighter volume, get below that swing point, get down to 493-ish is what we'll call it. And the reason is because what uh, Hovnanian did is it broke a uh, broke the uh, top of the descending price channel. I only have uh, just here using the uh, the line tool. I'm not using the actual, you know, showing you the bottom and the top. But what I'm using as opposed to a trend here, and it's close enough where you could probably use either and just simply get away from it. But I'm using the actual open from the trading session on January 2nd. You see how it opened there at a price level of $7.33. So I use that as my uh, first touch point out here. And then you can see it made a, a couple of swing points. I'm just really using the open again here on uh, June the uh, 19th. June the 19th, the open of this equity was 641. And then it runs right into the uh, open slash close of this candle here on December 16th, 2013. So you got a nice, uh, you got a nice little uh, channel line that is uh, trended here. Now it broke the channel, never came back and tested. Maybe we're going to see a test here inside of Hovnani. And again, if we take a look at it, it made its high right around the same time that the markets made its highs. It has not really been able to claw its way back up there. If anything, it's showing some pressure to the downside. And uh, Hovnani and maybe making a, a good, a decent buy here if it comes back and it tests the uh, rising uh, or the descending price channel out here that it broke through. Uh, but first thing it's got to do, it's got to break the uh, swing point. It's got to break this recent swing point here from uh, January the uh, 27th out there. Again, 5.6 million shares. The number to be watching is $5.54 out here. We'll take a look at some of the other uh, equities inside of the uh, housing uh, market out here. In fact, let's do that. Maybe somebody uh, shoot me a couple of names. You've got Hovnanian. you got uh, Toll Brothers, right? Toll, I think, is T-O-L, if I'm not mistaken here. So let's take a look at Toll Brothers. Looks like this is uh, Ryland. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, David. Uh, but let's take a look at uh, Toll Brothers. Now, Toll Brothers much stronger. Toll Brothers looks similar to the uh, market. So Toll Brothers following along with the uh, market. Let's see. It made a high. Oh, that's all the way back here. When? That's in May. Let's not take a look at that. Let's take a look at its January December 31st high. So December 31st, you've got uh, Toll Brothers gets up to 37 and a quarter. So much stronger uh, stock out there than Hovnanian. Uh, let me just get rid of everything that's on here. Let's actually go see what Toll Brothers is doing because it's taking out a uh, recent swing point high here. That's what it uh, did yesterday. Now, the uh, swing point I'm looking at is May 23rd had 10 million shares. Let's draw a line across the uh, bottom of the uh, chart out here. So you had a nice high volume high out here inside of uh, Toll Brothers, and you can see it took that level out, did it with uh, less, a lighter volume out here. Let's take a look at the volume from yesterday inside here, because that's when it broke above this level. Did it with 4 million shares, so quite a bit lighter on the uh, volume. Uh, what's that, 4 million versus 10.8? Uh, so does it does it on, what, less than, uh, less than 40% out here? Uh, nonetheless, uh, that area now, that old, uh, that old resistance may become new support. We'll see out here, but it's looking much stronger than the uh, than certainly Hovnani. And let's take a look at a weekly chart here uh, for Toll Brothers. Oh, that's an interesting thing. So Toll Brothers here, let me uh, go ahead and move this a little bit further, see if I can expand it out. What Toll Brothers actually uh, did here last week, this is a weekly chart on my screen. Let me get rid of some of the noise out here. Let me get rid of this, let me get rid of this, 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 that, that, 
There we go. Just going to get rid of all of that. So what's interesting here about Toll Brothers, it's actually been consolidating, let's just call it since uh, July of 2012. July 2012, the low there is 2840. The high of the consolidation that we'll use here is uh, 3836 uh, right around. That's going to be easier. Instead of doing the math, I'm just simply going to go ahead and draw a secondary box. What we are seeing here inside of Toll Brothers is a break of the uh, consolidation. Now, the uh, positive thing there is that, you know, it can do, if it can stay above the consolidation level, so we're going to use right around, we'll just use uh, 38 bucks. Let's just make it easy. Uh, $38, if it stays above 38 bucks, uh, Toll Brothers ought to make a move up to about $48 in time. So this will be an interesting one to be paying attention to and uh, focus on. Uh, let's go to uh, Victor in Paramus, New Jersey. Victor, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Good. I'm just looking where you think uh, CLNE is going and Twitter will get to a Twitter. I'm, I'm sorry? No, and Twitter is the next one. So, okay, all right. Let's take a look at CLNE, Clean Energy. Yeah. It's uh, trading right now at 926. Are you, I know you, I think you've been looking at playing this from the long side. Are you in a long position on no, this? No, uh, I think long because it got pretty beat up when the earnings came out. You see that high volume there, there? so I don't know. Absolutely. Like 2008, no, I don't know. Could it go down to $6? I don't know. You know, uh, Victor, let's pull this back on a little, on a, a longer term chart here. Trying. On a, yeah, you, you know, the, the thing that, uh, what, what, what's interesting here, about this equity, and you're right, the volume. This was taking on a, a swing point, uh, Victor, from October 7, 2011, uh, the low of which was 902. Granted, you're trading above it right now, but that was what done with uh, 6.6 .6 million shares, and last week you came down with twice the volume, 12 million shares. And it mm -hmm. says that that low from last week at least ought to be tested here. Um, and if it can, if it can, if it gets below that level. Um, yeah, that, you said six bucks. I would have to say more like four fifty, four sixty. Yeah, five forty. If it, uh, you know, it depends what it really does this week here. So it's taken on the swing point from October. Just based on a weekly uh, chart out here, it's taken on the swing point from October seventh, two thousand eleven, and it's done it with volume. So it needs to test the low of last week for sure on lighter volume and see a sign of strength in order for it not to go down into the uh, 450, 537-ish uh, range, which takes you back to 2008. What a nasty-looking stock chart compared to the market, you know what I mean? But uh, right. Twitter, though, maybe. Let's go take a look at uh, Twitter, TWTR. Do you use that service by any chance? No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Twitter out here, trading right now at $54.67 out here. Are you looking for a, a long entry into Twitter? No, no, I just I notice it bounces. I notice the government uses it. Now they're allowed to twit stuff and all that. My kid uses it. Like he doesn't use Facebook anymore. I'm just buying, I just figure a name recognition. It might have a, the, the point and figure yeah. chart says it's going to retest 38 again. I don't know if that's right either, so... I just didn't well, down, you know, what, I what, 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 I would have to say that, uh, you know, if you're looking for potential entries into this, you, you'd go back to that IPO date as, mm -hmm. as one of the potential places to be uh, looking at, which was the uh, $50.09 range. Now, if we take a look at just kind of like uh, normal lightning bolt patterns, the A to B equals CD, the, the December 26th high of 74.73, that'd be your A point. That's what I would use for my A point. My B point would be January 9th. Below there, Victor, 55, 59, and the uh, C point is uh, February 5th. So the point in the figure chart you were saying about the $48 range? No, it says 38, 37. 38, okay. 48.07 would be a 1-to-1 one -one A to B equals uh, CD uh, pattern, and again, gets you back into that IPO uh, area. Uh, it really just depends on what happens when price gets down to about 49.99, and that's that gap down low from uh, February 6th out there. If it's coming in with lighter volume, meaning less than 64 million shares, maybe it doesn't make its way all the way back down to the uh, bottom. If it is coming in with more than 64 million shares, then I'd have to say, yeah, uh, 38 bucks would be the uh, number. 38.80 is the actual low right now from November 25th. Yeah. I had a question for you. You use a CBO skew key. It's called C it says it's overbought right now. CBOE skew key. It's called SKEW key. I don't. I no, I, I don't, and I, it says we're I apologize. Overbought by a lot. Yeah. It says that it says that Twitter's overbought. No, no, the whole market's overbought. So oh, the, the whole market. Right. Yeah, we're at a market top right now. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, look, no question. Uh, if you, you know, I don't. If you, if we're going to use, what are we going to use as our guide for the market? The New York Stock Exchange, the Nasdaq, the Dow. Which, which would, which would yeah. you want to use? Just don't blink your eyes. Don't blink your eyes. 
<laughs> Don't blink your eyes. Okay. Uh, well, you know, you if later. we use, if we use, uh, I would say that the uh, New York Stock Exchange is probably the best uh, of all of the uh, indexes. What's that? Well, sounds like we might have uh, lost Victor. But, you know, just answering his question here, if we use the New York Stock Exchange here uh, and we use the daily chart, uh, one of the things that I like to uh, take a look at, folks, is the uh, relative strength indicator out here. And if we use that uh, relative strength indicator on the daily chart for the New York Stock Exchange, it's not overbought. In fact, the uh, RSI reading, even after yesterday, was only 64. It really needs to get above 70 uh, the 70 level, because it's just kind of like an EKG, an electrocardiogram there. You know, normal movements are between the 70 and uh, 30 level out here. And in this case, uh, on the uh, daily chart here for the uh, New York Stock Exchange, and that took out the 2007 highs yesterday, um, you know, it's not overbought. And what happened here on the daily chart in order to uh, help get rid of some of that overbought condition was the uh, day, that session here from a couple days ago on Monday, uh, on March 3rd when the market went ahead and traded lower. So it really kind of cleared out that overbought uh, condition. Now, a little bit different uh, story if you take a look at different time frames, right? Because uh, weekly move here, you know, had a little bit less noise. So if we take a look at the uh, relative strength index here on a uh, weekly chart, well, guess what? It, too, is not really overbought at all. Just depends what you use out there as tools. 877-927-6648. Dow's off 14. Be right back, folks. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFNN.com. Eastern legend tells of a fair maiden who was offered a rare gift by the king of the land, a bag of pearls. The king promised that she could keep the largest, most perfect pearl she could find with these three conditions. One, choose only one pearl. Two, remove one pearl at a time, accept or reject it. And three, if rejected, it would be lost forever. She began by looking at the pearls passing on many special treasures. She delved deeper into the bag and soon the pearls were replaced with pebbles. Sadly, she went home empty-handed. Folks, replace pearls with time because we cannot go back even two seconds. We live in the eternal moment of now. So when now are you going to take advantage of my offer to you, a subscription to my daily investment newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you can experience the most incredible pearls for trading and investing, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator and Strategy. The offer? It gets better. A 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't go home empty-handed. Mastering Probability. Available on the homepage of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. 
While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, kind of a flat market out here. Dow's off six points. S&P's up one. Uh, Nasdaq's up uh, two points out here. Russell down uh, three. And it ought to go back to a, a question that uh, Victor in uh, Paramus, New Jersey, was asking about using a, a tool to calculate an overbought uh, or an oversold condition out here. And it, this is my experience when I take a look at uh, different indicators out here. And the, the market, the way I take a look at any uh, stock, uh, index, uh, commodity, whatever it is you might be trading, you know, I, I find that uh, that the that what you're looking at should be broken down into four different areas uh, because these are factors, these are characteristics, patterns that are involved with everything, and and therefore, and and what's what's important is to also understand is that you want to become a master of certain tools that are out there. Now, when I what I'm saying here is that if we were to take, for example, the uh, SPY, the SPY, you'd want to first break it down into four different uh, category areas. What I consider to be speed and momentum, velocity. Those are all one things. Momentum is really the word that I like to uh, go with. And there are a number of oscillators that measure velocity, that measure momentum, that measure speed. Williams accumulation distribution is one of them. Williams percentage R. Uh, there's something called the os uh, ultimate oscillator, the TRIX, T-R-I-X. The stochastic, the stochastic uh, is going to measure momentum. Just the relative strength indicator, which I use out here. So I don't use the stochastic. And the only reason is because you want to use one or the other, in my opinion, because they both measure the same thing. If you go take a look at the correlation they're about 85% correlated. That doesn't mean you can't use them both, but you really want to become a master of one. You can use a relative momentum index. You can use, uh, you can use candlesticks. Now, I use candlesticks. They actually measure momentum as well. I use candlesticks for helping me to identify what the bulls and bears are saying and reversal areas. Uh, you can use uh, uh, the CCI. Uh, you know, accumulation swing indexes. Each of those measure velocity, measure speed, measure momentum. That's one area. Another area is the energy angle, verticality. The energy angle, for example, uh, David White has got the power law vector indicator. That is a tool that measures the energy of an angle. That's one tool. Uh, if you uh, and so if you haven't signed up for uh, for that uh, software, folks, it costs you a buck to do it right now, and you're going to get a, a free workshop that David and Tom are going to put on. So do that. If you the other tool to measure verticality. Uh, you've got the Arun indicator. You've got the, what is it, Donkian, D-O-N-C-H-I-A-N. My apologies. I don't use that, uh, uh, but the, those channel lines, uh, Fisher Transformation indi uh, Indicator, GAN Swing Bands will help you to identify uh, verticality. Uh, inertia is a, a tool out there. I don't use it, but inertia, I love the, I love the name because inertia is all about uh, momentum or, or what have you. You can use linear regression slopes out there. You can use the MACD. The MACD helps to measure verticality out there. So that is, and then there are certain moving average crosses that you can use that help you with that. Hey, you've heard of the golden cross, the death cross. So those are, you know, you want to really become uh, proficient at one of those. Then you've got volume, supply and demand. Supply and demand is only one element. It's one fourth. Uh, you know, sometimes the weight of that uh, inside a uh, ETF or an index has more uh, meaning, meaning uh, the momentum, meaning the energy angle, meaning the volume. Then you've got volatility itself, liquidity altogether. And so, in liquidity, uh, in order to measure liquidity uh, out there, um, what, could, what could you actually use for liquidity? Uh, geez, all those uh, tools, the names of those tools. Well, I don't know where, where, where they're, where they, 
went to. But in any event, just to give you an idea here, boy, I can do this in about uh, in about uh, 15 seconds. When I took a look at a uh, taking a look at the spy between July of 2007 and October of 2010, uh, the velocity, the best tool that actually worked that gave you the highest expectancy or return was using the inverse from the long side Fisher transformation of the relative strength. On the verticality, it was the ruin indicator. On volume, it was just simply the money flow index that was used out there. Anyways, I just thought I would touch on that. Hey, have a great Wednesday, folks. I hope to see you tomorrow morning or maybe just in a few minutes. We'll be right back. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. You're watching Tiger TV.